So uh, the title of my anthology is More to Come, and it's titled this because I'm 18 and I have a lot more to uh, come in my life. Um, so chapter one is about uh, community service, like sophomore year, community service, we had to do everything. Chapter two is uh, San Antonio Spurs. That's about how the uh, NBA team, the Spurs, like, affects my life and how they're really important to me. Chapter three is colors. It's just a poem about colors. Chapter four is bake sale. It's pretty self-explanable. Chapter five is my bucket list. Chapter six is prom night and how uh, I had a very fun time last year. Chapter seven is my word cloud, just some words describing me. And then chapter eight is life, just a poem about life. I'm going to be reading chapter four, bake sale. Um, it all started with a bake sale, or as the students would call it. What seemed like a great idea quickly backfired. The result was a 10 day suspension, 24 hours of community service, and a five page essay. I had lots of time to think. But let me start from the beginning. It was a sunny day and four brilliant kids had an idea. This idea was to make some baked products such as brownies to eat. I am not and will not admit to anything. To me, I thought this was going, I was going to school, sit down at lunch and enjoy myself a homemade sandwich, ham and cheese, with some chips, Doritos, and last but not least, a brownie. The brownie had nothing more in it than chocolate chunks, the chocolate batter, and of course, love. But the school looked at it differently. I remember it like it was yesterday. Ah, it was such a nice day. It was 7 in the morning and I was just getting up for school. It took me about 40 minutes to eat, shower, pack, lunch, etc. I was ready to go to school. On my way to school, I was enjoying my drive, blasting some Beyonce. And not one worry in my mind. I parked my car and walked in the first period. At that point. <laughs> Got that on video. <laughs> Worked my car and walked in the first period. I had late arrival, so I went straight to the cafe, purchased a bagel, and sat down at a table. As I sat down, one of my friends said, hey, why don't we share lunches? I thought that was a splendid idea. I began to take a bite out of my bagel just before I would take my lunch out. But just as I was doing so, Mr. Thompson apprehended me. Mr. Thompson asked if I could bring my bag and bagel with me to Mr. Gollowitz's office. Once this happened, there was no doubt in my mind that they just wanted to congratulate me for being an outside, uh, outstanding citizen. But the look on Mr. Thompson's face wasn't one of joy, but despair. So I knew it couldn't be good. As I walked in, Mr. Hallett greeted me, asked me to sit down. As I sat, he asked me to see my bag. I asked why as I gave it to him. He looks at me and says that a student told him I was going to bring brownies, or better known as a bake sale to the school, that day with me. I looked him straight in the eyes and smiled and said, yes, it's in my lunch. I have extra, would you like one? He was not amused, he continued and said, not normal brownies. I thought responded, brownies with nuts? He looks at Mr. Thompson and back at me and opened my bag. He looks through my bag as I enjoyed a heart, enjoy a hearty breakfast. The bagel, of course. Mr. Hallett pulls out my lunch and finds the brownie. He and Mr. Thompson smell the brownies they investigate. They looked at one another and said, it smells like a normal brownie. Once again, I say yes, that is because there are no nuts. They gave me a stare and put it down. I thought that I would be fine and go back to my day, but they insisted on keeping the brownie and telling me that they had to check it, whatever that meant. They left the room after that and I enjoyed my bagel. The bagel tasted great. I remember the taste so well, especially because as I was eating, I was eating it, they walked back in and said my mother was on her way. I really never been scared before until that point, but this was most likely the scariest situation I've ever been put in. Later that morning, my mother walked into the office to pick me up. Let me tell you, the look she gave me was one that she was turning me into stone, complete horror. She knew not to yell at me in the school, but once we left, that was it. I was like a turtle hiding in my shell, trying to avoid the yelling and anger. As you would expect, once we got home, I was under lockdown. I wasn't allowed to drive, use my phone, any electronics. It was awful. The next day, believe it or not, I was back in school and had my phone back because all I did was beg for it. I remember all the texts and comments my friends and random people would give me. Cody, how long are you in for? What's the bail? And the popular... Heard you got handcuffed. The funny thing was none of those were relevant to what happened. I was 17, did nothing wrong, at least in my mind I thought that. Once one person hears something interesting about someone, the whole school finds out, but that's rich for you. After a few days of attending school, I finally got the call and I was suspended for 10 days. It seemed bad and many got, would regret it, but I don't. Over the break, I got to catch up on some work and learn that the incident was a warning that I don't make the same mistake in the future. My family lost some trust in me, but over time they regained it back because they knew I learned my lesson. After all this, I only have one question. Why didn't Mr. Hallett and Mr. Thompson like my brownies? Guess it's better to keep it a secret. Wait.